Harry Potter est une saga qui, depuis sa création, n'a cessé de passionner les fans. Une passion qui m'emmène aujourd'hui à Montauban pour rencontrer Josh Herman, celui qui, dans les films, a incarné Gregory Goyle. Le comédien britannique s'est rendu sur place pour partager un moment avec son public, venu nombreux pour immortaliser ce moment. Je remercie le fondateur d'Onink d'avoir organisé cet événement et de m'avoir permis de réaliser cet entretien. Vous pouvez trouver dès maintenant le lien vers le site internet de la marque dans la description. L'interview de Josh Herman ça commence maintenant. Première question pour commencer, quel est ton souvenir le plus lointain sur Harry Potter My oldest memory relating to Harry Potter was um was probably my best friend. He had just read the books. Yeah. Uh, I think we must have been about 11 or 12. Um and he was telling me you need to you need to read these books. They're awesome. So I was like what's what's this Harry Potter What, what's it about? And he he said, uh, "Oh, it's about like magic and, and wizards and stuff like this." And I looked at him. I was like, <laughs> "Bro, that's that's not cool." Like, and, and that's my first memory. That was him him trying to get me to read the books. And then maybe a year or two after, I think he uh, then I got the audition for for uh, for Dudley, and I to and I told him. And he was like, oh, he just went crazy. Comment ça organisait ta vie d'enfant Comment ça s'est déroulé Est-ce que justement, as... les autres enfants de ton entourage avaient un regard sur toi qui était différent Est-ce qu'ils arrivaient à faire la différence entre le personnage et l'acteur um, Yeah, yeah. I think I got, uh, because because Goyle was like a smaller smaller part, um, so I wasn't filming all the, all the, all the time. Like I would be filming for say a few weeks, and then I would have a few weeks off, and then I'd be back for a week, off for a week. Yeah, so I got the I got the best of both worlds, really. I got to I had the Harry Potter life, and then I had my my personal life as well. Et est-ce que tu te rendais compte de l'ampleur du projet à l'époque? I I mean I I I was aware how popular the books were. Uh, the books were famous already and yeah. were were very popular. Um, I didn't quite realize the scale of it until I went to the um, Leavesden Studios for a screen test. And then when when you come into Leavesden Studios, you're driving around the roads, and I could see them building all the sets. They were making them, and the signage, the signs on the walls, were hand painted signs and it looked like and then i realized this is this is lot, lots of money the castle uh, don't know exist uh, unfortunately uh, no unfortunately unfortunately not no <laughs> parts of it do par parts of it do um but yeah mo mo as a whole It's, yeah, CGI. Il y a une question que j'ai toujours eu envie de te poser pour la séquence du polynectar dans le deuxième volet. Comment tu t'es préparé pour ce rôle Est-ce que tu observais Daniel Radcliffe parce que forcément tu devais jouer Harry Potter Before they before we started filming Chamber of Secrets, the producers we had, um, made me and Jamie who played Crab made us watch the first movie about 10 times. Oh wow. <laughs> you know, um, they arranged private screenings for Uh, for us in, a, in in central London, I think it was a war, special Warner Brothers screening room, where all the, the the executive producers they 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 go in there to watch the uh, to watch what they call the rushes. Right. Every every day when they finish filming, they have the rushes, and all the the producers and executives they they watch the rushes in a private cinema, very small but very comfortable chairs like sofas and leather, leather sofas yeah. um and yeah so we had to just watch the first movie about 10 times just to study their body language and mannerisms and yeah and i was, I was so bored of it i was so bored of the first movie after that c'est la scène dont t'es le plus fier oh yeah yeah i think it's the it's the it's the scene where goyle is featured the most uh and i think we did a good job and a, a lot of people Uh, were very happy with it. Uh, they said um, it was. It was a, some people say it's the, they, their favorite part of the movie, and um, and yeah, I think it was a success. Et à un moment donné, la saga se termine dix ans après. J'aimerais savoir ce qui s'est passé dans ta tête à ce moment-là quand t'as réalisé que bah c'était terminé. It didn't really hit me at first. I think after 10 years, we was all kind of. I don't want to sound ungrateful, but we was all getting a bit bored. No, okay. We was all getting a bit tired, and we wanted to move on and see and see what what comes next, the next chapter. Um, 
Uh, but when they said, right, you're finished filming, I, in the back of my head, I was thinking they will call me back to do some reshoots or they'll, they'll be, they'll call me back for another <laughs> day here or another day there. But then after a month, um, when they, they didn't call me back and it was like, okay, it's actually over. It's actually finished. Um, then it was like, yeah, sad. Ouais, so felt, sad. felt sad, yeah. Comment t'expliques que même si les films sont terminés, les fans sont encore là, sont encore dévoués et, et aussi engagés? The magic sounds cool. that sounds cheesy, sounds corny, but there's not many other. There's, well, there's no other world like like the Harry Potter universe. There's similar things, but not not like Harry Potter. And I think it's the fact that um, anyone can watch it. You know, anyone you don't have to be a child. It's not it's not a child's movie. It's, I, I kind of see it as like the, it's a bit like the Star Wars universe. You know, um, it's generational. Yeah. So people hand it down to their kids. You have the you have the the, the diehard fans, and then the the children watch grow up watching their their mum and dad yeah. being a diehard fan, and it goes hand they hand it down, and it gets. Passed down through generations. C'est uh, une saga de films que t'as transmis à ton tour. I watched the second one the other day, actually, with my with my my youngest son. Oh wow! Yeah, he's nine. He had never seen Chamber of Secrets, so he was like, uh, "Dad, can we watch Chamber of Secrets?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course." Um, and he liked it. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> he I think he gets confused. He he just like whenever you see whenever whenever I'm on the on the screen, he's like. <laughs> It's you. <laughs> yeah, he's he's uh, he finds it strange, but but cool. Quel est ton préféré des films d'Harry Potter? Oh, my favorite, my favorite one is the uh, Prisoner of Azkaban. Ah, like me. <laughs> yeah, even though you, I'm hardly in that one, uh, they they tried they tried cutting Goyle out of that film. Um, for, it's a long story to go into it, but uh, yeah, they kind of replaced me with a, this this. This other character called Pike. They made a mistake, and uh, and eventually they got rid of Pike, and they brought me back a little bit. So. T'es ici justement pour euh, rencontrer les fans, mais aussi bah, parler de cette marque euh, Onink. Euh, comment elle est née cette collaboration Comment s'est faite cette rencontre um, Well, I met Leo at um, it was a Harry Potter themed tattoo convention. It was there, and they wanted a Harry Potter actor there uh, to do some signing. And the promoter of the show, he gave me a free tattoo. He said, you go and, you go to all the tattoo artists, you choose whatever you want, we, we'll pay for it. Um, and they had lots of different stalls there, clothing, and Leo's stall was there. And the logo, it really caught my eye. So I went and asked him for, uh, do you have a t-shirt uh, or a jumper, a hoodie or something? And then he gave it to me for free. And then I said, okay, I follow you on Instagram. He followed me back and we stayed in contact. And then, uh, yeah, and it went from there, basically. And a friendship. Friendship, absolutely, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, the last question, uh, what is your next project? I have nothing in the pipeline at the minute. Still trying to make it, still, still, still struggling, you know. But thankfully, uh, you know, because I was a part of the Harry Potter universe, I still, I get invited to things like this and comic cons and I get to travel the globe and I can still make money from Harry Potter and I feel very lucky. I don't need to have a, a, an everyday job. Yeah. I don't have to go to work nine till five and I don't have to have acting work, but I am still an actor and I, I want acting work. It's just, it's just very hard. It's hard, it's hard to, um, it's hard to get jobs now and it's hard to be consistent. Yeah. That's, I think the thing, the, 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 the beauty of being an actor and the, the mystery and excitement is that you don't know what's around the corner. Like, I could go for an audition, you know, next week, and I could be absolutely perfect for it, and it could change my life. So, you, and uh, you, you never know what, what, what can happen, so... Magic life. <laughs> yeah, in a way, yeah. Merci beaucoup, thank you so much. Merci à vous.